Hey guys, welcome to yeah, we're back again. Episode two. Episode two of the meta game game, the catchy. meta game meta game. That's catchy. It is a catchy title. Um, we have decided that for this second episode, we're gonna kind of mix it up a little bit. Um, we're gonna pick our question before we pick our five random games, and um, this question is going to be decided by a pretty weird process. Yeah, that we we're just... gonna draw three questions. Yeah, and we each have the opportunity to eliminate one of them. Mm -hmm. And the remaining one is the one we're due. Or right. not due. Or due. So we can each kill okay. a question each. All I'm right, ready. question one. The first question is... Which game has a more satisfying core mechanic? Okay. That's a cool question. Second question. Which game has better characters? Okay. And final question. Which game is a better simulation of its subject? That's a deep one. That, that one could be... if In the right setting, that one could be potentially interesting. That's why I'm going to kill it. Yeah, I think... I think uh, I'm going. Oh, yikes! Um, since the last conversation was pretty abstract, which was about, um, the, I think I'm going to kill the mechanic one. I love that question, but I want to have a conversation about something a little more specific. So okay. characters. All right. Um, so this is our question. Um, We've already shuffled the game deck, yeah, and um, the uh, previous games have been eliminated. You will not see any game that we've already shown you. Um, not this episode, at least. No. Um, and should we show off our, our hand of five Absolutely. this time? All right, cool. So here's your five. I wonder if I can do that, like, cool poker, like, like poker like, style? folding them up, Probably. you know? Like, yeah, I don't, I'm going to have to, boop, I'm just setting it down for a second while I grab these. This is really good. Don't throw up, viewers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, I got that. All right, considering the question, that could be a potentially powerful card, but I'm not a huge expert on it, so I couldn't name them all. Uh, that's a that's gonna be a fuck no. Um, I see an angle I could take that, but it's a dumb one. Uh, that unfortunately is not in my wheelhouse, and huh, this is gonna be an interesting one. Okay, all right. I'm gonna take it. I haven't even looked at my cards yet, so it's a journey for all of us. Okay, first card is okay. Hmm. Definitely a potential answer for some people, I'm sure. Uh-huh. Another good one. Probably not. Probably. Um. Jeez. Probably not again. And our final one. That's super rough. That's a really good picture. I'm just going to zoom in and enjoy that. <laughs> so you can appreciate that. All right. I'm going to put my hand in front of the camera and hand it back to you. Um. Since you went first in the first episode, should I go first? Yeah, definitely. Around? But let's play ours at the same time. Are you ready? Um, you got played with the hand you're dealt. Uh, quite, quite, quite literally. Quite literally. Um, fuck. I hope the viewers at home aren't screaming at their YouTube boxes telling me which one to play. <sighs> I just don't know shit about that one game. Um. Yeah, sometimes the cards aren't right. You just gotta. All right, I'm going between to between these games. Yeah, I'm gonna. All rest. right, ready? One, two, three. Huh. Better characters. This is gonna be a cool one. Yeah, this is, it's gonna be weird. It will be weird. Two minutes on the clock. Yes, sir. Um, and it's up to you here. All right. Uh, and you. Ben, go. All right. Um, I'm going to say that Street Fighter 2 has better characters than Braid for the reason that it has not only more characters and not only more iconic characters, but characters with more characterization. Um, the character, the protagonist of Braid, Tim, he is kind of a blank slate in a lot of ways. We have all that those big bodies of text to read about and sort of infer these, these generalities about him, and more specifically about John Blow. But Street Fighter II has very well realized characters that are, even like, I don't play fighting games, I don't know anything about fighting games, but I know about Blanca, and I know about Chun-Li, and Ken, and Ryu. Like, it's a, it's a cast of characters like no other within the realm of fighting games, and probably within the realm of video games. These are characters that everyone knows. Um, like people who play games and people who don't play games it's it the even though the amount of text um that these characters are given to 
to sort of uh, give them personality is, is a lot less in size than Braid. I, I think that they are Braid's sole character, or I mean Braid has a couple, but Braid's primary character who has any characterization is um, not, and probably deliberately so, a character who you know a lot about, whereas these characters are so colorful and so full of life and so full of personality that even if you're from the outside looking in at Street Fighter, you know these characters and you, they, they are meaningful to video games as a whole. And I'm going to go ahead and retire. 20 seconds on the clock. All right. We're switching it up. All right. How'd I do, Matt? I'm not telling. I want to win. All right. Well, if you want to win, you... Well, I'll argue you. Yeah, you got to you gotta start. That's right. The BBC says so. I just hit start. All right. Then I'm going to go. You have an incredibly eclectic mix of archetypal characters in Street Fighter, but they're all just that. They're archetypes. And they're not particularly interesting beyond their archetypal relationships and the fact that Zangief wrestles a bear. Tim, on the other hand, has this huge range of characterizations and emotions and feelings and situations that are inherent in his character and what you take from the art design around him and his plight, specifically his plight and his desire to fix his mistakes are what give Tim a greater resonance with individuals. What it makes Tim interesting is his the way that his mechanics are reflective of his emotional state. He wants to go back in time. He wants to repeat the mistakes. He wants to he would see the shadow of himself that has already acted and act in tandem. He wants the world to stop before he makes his own decision. It creates this portrait of desperation and anxiety and loneliness and and complete total emotional breakdown. That when the game gets to its final twist. That it's no, it's ultimately, in retrospect, it's no surprise that the scene, the turn of events that occur at the end of the game occurred as they did. Because Tim's a nutcase. He's an emotional wreck. And I empathize with that. I empathize with a person who is damaged. Because most people have things in their lives that they wish they could take back, that they wish they could control. And what makes Braid and Tim great isn't that Tim doesn't have a lot of characterization. It's that that characterization is made manifest through the gameplay. And gameplay unites it with the story. And that's how the story takes on its meaning. And that's how the character of Tim gets his meaning. I'm going to call it. That was very good. All right. All right, so I guess... So uh, yeah, how, how do we, we didn't really specify in the last episode, but um, in what way do people vote? Just leaving comments? It's, yeah, it's if you, whoever you think you think made the better, uh, the better argument. And why? And uh, yeah, please leave a comment. Let's not poll it, let's just let them answer. Yeah, just have, have a nice chat about it. It's not about who won or lose. Who do the, you think? Who do you think is a better character? The, the Street Fighter or the Brave? Yeah, who do you think is a better character? Chun-Li and Blanca or an hourglass full of sand? You decide.